Welcome to Mr. News Art Class. It's wonderful to see your smiling faces. Over the last couple of lessons, we have been talking about the color wheel. Today, we're going to take a look at how that color wheel is made, and we're going to talk about primary and secondary colors that we can find on that wheel. Let's start by taking a look at this color wheel. Now, this is found in a book by uh, Marc Gagné, I hope I'm saying that name right, and the book is called A Book About Color. Now, I'm not going to read this entire book to you, but I'll go through just the basics. Let's start on Color Street. On Color Street, we've got all the different colored houses. Notice that three of those houses are bigger than the others. Red, yellow, and blue. Those are the primary colors. But why do we call them primary colors? What does the word primary even mean? Well, it means one. Each of those colors is only one color. The other colors actually have two different colors mixed in together to make them. For example, orange is made out of, that's right, red and yellow make orange. And blue, and yellow make green, yeah. And there's one other way we can mix colors up. Blue and red make purple, right? And so we call these colors the secondary colors because each of those is two primary colors mixed together. Now, let me go show you that color wheel again. You see, if you take those houses from Color Street and you arrange them in a circle, you get a color wheel. Notice that when we arrange the colors in this order, we see color mixing. Where is the purple house? It's located between red and blue, which are the two colors that you mix together to make purple, right? And where is the orange house? Well, that's right, it's between red and yellow. And red and yellow are the colors you mix together to make orange. And I bet you can figure out where the greenhouse should go. That's right, it should go between the blue and the yellow, because those are the colors you mix together to make green. So to make a color wheel, you start with the three primary colors equally spaced out, and then you put the secondary colors between them based on color mixing. Today, we're going to focus on just those three primary colors. You are going to need a black and the three primary colors and a white paper. Because today, we're going to be talking about a famous artist named Piet Mondrian. Here's one of Mondrian's paintings. What colors do you see in this painting? That's right, it's just those three primary colors. But why? Also, take a look at those lines. Do you see any diagonal lines? I see a bunch of vertical lines that go up down. I see a bunch of horizontal lines that go side side. But I don't see anything diagonal or in between. Not even a little bit, but why? Take a look at this landscape painting by the same artist. Do you notice that the windmill stands tall? In its simplest form, that windmill is vertical, right? And now, look at this horizon line between the hills and the sky. It's a little bumpy, but you could get away with drawing it as just a simple, straight, horizontal line, right? So let's start our picture by drawing those lines. The windmill, just a straight line. I'm not trying to draw a windmill, I'm just trying to draw a line where the windmill is. And the horizon, just a straight horizontal line. Well, now it looks like I have four rectangles on my paper. Let's see what's next. Do you see these yellow clouds? Well, they're all floofy and swirly, but you guessed it. I can use just a series of vertical and horizontal lines to get that basic idea, right? So let's do that. 
another horizontal line up a little higher and maybe a vertical line up here that only comes down to that line. It doesn't go all the way. Now let's look at the lake pond thingy at the bottom that's reflecting the sky and the windmill and the clouds on the surface of its water. You see how we can make this set of lines that they, they don't look like a reflection of a windmill and clouds, but they go in the same direction-ish, right? So let's do that here. Underneath your first line down here, your horizon line, underneath that, we'll kind of make a reflection of what we see up here. So it'll be another line all the way across. And then this line just kind of going down. And last, if you look around that windmill, you see some trees and bushes that, you know, they're kind of round and fluffy and they're not really straight up and down or side to side, are they? But we could represent them just as simple squares. So let's do that. Just some squares that are here along the horizon. And they don't all have to be the same size. It's up to you. Now, if there are any more lines or rectangles or squares that you want to add to this picture, now is the time to do that before we start coloring. But I'm going to leave mine like this. What we don't want to do, if you're going to add more, you don't want to do anything diagonal. You want verticals and horizontals, but nothing diagonal. Now, when we look at Mondrian's windmill painting, that windmill is kind of reddish brown, right? Well, if I'm just using these three colors, these three primary colors, which one of these is most like that windmill? Well, yeah, it's the red, right? It's kind of a reddish brown, so I'll use a red to color in that windmill. Notice that I took my time to very carefully color inside the lines without going over any of my black lines. Just basically colored a couple of red rectangles. Next, let's take a look at those clouds. Those clouds are bright yellow, aren't they? Well, if they're really bright yellow, then I could color them completely yellow. But I also might want to leave some parts of them white to show that they're really bright. So I think what I'll do is I'll color this part here yellow. I'll leave this big area white, but then I'm going to come color this area yellow where the reflection of some of those clouds are on the, on the lake. So I'll be having yellow here and yellow here.
Again, notice how slow and steady I filled those in without going over the lines. Take your time. Make sure those colors are nice and neat. Now, if we look at those little hills and bushes and trees and stuff, what color are they? They're kind of a dark green. Which one of these colors matches that the best? Well, none of them match it. They're green and I don't have a green. Does that mean I'm gonna go mix blue and yellow to make it? Not if I'm Piet Mondrian. See, Mondrian wanted to simplify everything into the absolute simplest ideas possible. That's why he used vertical lines and horizontal lines without any diagonals, and that's why he only used the primary colors. So, the blue matches those the best. I mean, they're green, which is a mix of blue and yellow, but my yellow is really bright, and those trees and hills and stuff are kind of dark. So I'm going to go with my blue to color in those trees and bushes, these squares. But I'm, do I want to color all of these blue? No, because then it'll just look like one big blue rectangle here. So what I'm going to do is kind of alternate and maybe make a pattern out of it. So I'll make blue here. And then I'll skip one. And then I'll make blue here. And then I'll skip one. And then I'll make blue here. Now I could go make the other three yellow, because that is the other component of green. Why not? I'll at least make this one yellow. And maybe this one too. You decide, it's totally, totally up to you. Now, as I look at this compared to that windmill painting, I'm seeing that there's a blue reflection on the water and there's blue up in the sky. So I'm gonna take out my blue and I'm gonna fill this area and I'm gonna fill this area, both with a blue. And then I think I'll be done. I think I'll just leave the rest white because there's also very bright patches in the sky and in the reflection. So I'll leave those areas white. So hopefully now you have seen and understood how and why Piet Mondrian used just black lines, vertical and horizontal, with the three primary colors because he was trying to simplify things. Instead of trying to get every last little detail, he was purposefully trying to pull the detail out and make landscapes in their simplest form. This is one type of abstraction. Abstraction is a long word that just means taking something that could maybe look real and just changing it in some way until it no longer looks real. In this case, we've changed a windmill and a pond into horizontal lines, vertical lines, and uh, primary colors. In our next lesson, we'll be talking about another famous artist who used music as his inspiration for abstract art. I can't wait to see you then.